thank you, everybody. Um, I'm gracious to get quite a nice segue coming off of the keynotes. I'm very fortunate to be part of Melanie's group, um, representing the Genome Informatics Group at OICR. And I'm very happy to be here at BOSC. This is my second year at BOSC. Um, and uh, last year I had a fabulous time, and I expect nonetheless this time as well, too. As I go through my presentation, uh, what I would like to see is uh, those with your laptops. I have the information on the screen. We have a website, a lot of the resources and materials that I'm going to be talking about that we've kind of developed over the past couple of months will be available there. And that is overture.bio, O-V-E-R-T-U-R-E -E dot bio. But nevertheless, if I can get to my next slide, I just have to click on the right screen. I know the drill. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk very briefly about what is Overture because Melanie has already kind of given a nice segue for it. I'm going to talk more in depth in terms of how it's used, showing you the UI and how a user would typically interact with it. Uh, and then I want to talk about how it's deployed and then some of the resources. This is what I'm really excited about that uh, we're developing in terms of reducing friction towards adoption, what I call frictionless adoption, which is a, a serious trouble for microservice architectures. Okay, so um, I don't think I need to go too in depth here. We're the software engineering group at OICR. We build software that enables researchers and the public to access big cancer data. We've done this quite a bit, and we've taken lessons learned across all of our projects and used them to iterate over a suite of reusable software tools that we call Overture. Uh, it has an orchestral theme, so you can see song, score, arranger, maestro, stage, and then we have ego as well, too. Um, and all of these microservices combined together as a general solution for creating genomic data platforms. Uh, so this is a front-end UI that I spun up before, uh, the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference platform. Uh, and again, this is largely used to help submit, uh, organize, and then share genomics data uh, with the ultimate goal of contributing to a network of data and discovery while fostering open data practices. Okay, so that was my, my very fast segue into what is Overture. I really want to talk about how it's used uh, in real terms too. So in terms of usage, uh, the two most obvious ones that we're talking about are exploring data and downloading it, and then of course, submitting data to a resource. While I go through this, I'm also going to touch on some of the things that a data administrator, somebody that owns a platform can do in terms of configuring and customizing it, because that's also important as well too. So exploration and download, this is our front end exploration page. You can see actually two components in play here. That would be stage and arranger. Stage is a React based uh, single page application. Uh, in this front end UI, we can see it being used for the nav bar at the top and the footer at the bottom. If you know React, it's quite fantastic. It gives you the data explorer, it gives you a login page but you can also extend it out, um, typically things like acknowledgements, uh, documentation, uh, or a, a data dictionary. Um, so it's quite extensible and quite fun to use. And then we also have a Ranger, which is our search API and search component UI generation service. So a Ranger on this front end UI uh, is first seen on the left-hand side. That's a faceted search where all of our search filter aggregations are. We have a filter notation at the top that you'll see get updated as I go through our download example. And then we have a data table that is represented in the middle, showing us all our wonderful metadata um, that gets updated in real time as we kind of make our searches and queries. This is all configurable and customizable. So all the data that you see on the screen can be configured by the administrator in terms of how that data is displayed, uh, in terms of what data is displayed and what's optional from the columns dropdown. From the use case of somebody that comes to a platform and wants to download data, what they can do is they can start with the left-hand faceted search option. In this case, I'm looking for data from the MICR and uh, OICR. Uh, the MICR is the Made Up Institute of Cancer Research, and the OICR is our fabulous Ontario Institute of Cancer Research. And that is going to populate uh, the filter uh, viewer at the top of nav bar and also provide us with our subset of data. Once you have a subset of interest, you can highlight that subset of interest and then go to the download dropdown. This gives you two options. You can download a file table, which will give you all the metadata that's represented in the file table from your data subset, 
or you can download a file manifest. The manifest is essentially just saying what uh, file objects are you downloading based on your query. And the reason we do that is because often with Overture, we're dealing with really large genomic files that aren't suitable for browser downloads. So when we go for a download, we download a file manifest first, and then using something like Docker, we can run our SCORE CLI tool. SCORE is our file transfer service. We supply SCORE with our manifest that we've just previously generated, as well as an output directory where we can now put those object files onto our local. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and um, it's quite a nice flow. Uh, Justin might touch on some alternative options that we have with ViruSeq, maybe not the way he just looked at me, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, in terms of the next phase, so that's exploration and downloading data. We really want to talk about uh, how do we submit data to a platform like this. And in terms of data submission, what has to precede it is a data model. So when we're talking about data submission, it really starts with the metadata and we're talking about Song, which is our metadata manager. All of uh, Song's uh, data is, uh, or the data models are stored as JSON schemas. The JSON schema essentially defines what fields are required, what fields are optional, and how those fields should be written. So how what syntax should be used. When you supply Song with a JSON schema, then data submitters can then supply their data to be validated against it by Song. So for data submission, it would be using our Song CLI tool. Uh, a user will usually use a spreadsheet and then export their spreadsheet as a JSON file and then submit it against Song. If everything is good, you will get a status of OK, and it will generate an automated analysis ID. The automated analysis ID is quite important because that is going to be used to track this metadata associated with its file data throughout the system. Following submission of metadata, when you get the AOK -okay for Song, the next step is to generate a manifest. This is going the other way. So you generate a manifest with that analysis ID so that both systems know exactly what's what, uh, and you give it a directory for where you want that, mouse, that manifest to be generated. With a manifest generated, you can then use our score tool to simply upload those, that file data. That file data will now exist in object storage, whereas our metadata is in our backend database, and they know that they exist because we are automatically tracking it through our analysis IDs. The final step, which is quite exciting, is that uh, we have publication control. So everything by default on submission is in a unpublished state. This is great for data releases. The second that we send a published command to any given analysis, it's automatically going to be indexed and then populated on our front end portal quite rapidly. Okay. So that brings me to my next segment, which is talking about deployment. So all of our, all of our microservices are stored as uh, Docker images. And the typical uh, workflow in terms of getting them up and running is a Docker run command with a environment variable file. In terms of a microservice architecture, there's many advantages when it is in production, but certainly one of those advantages is an ease of installation. Uh, it can be quite complex. There's a lot of configuration involved and the configurations can depend on the environment that it's getting installed to. Uh, this is definitely a major, uh, a uh, barrier in terms of adoption, it creates quite a bit of friction, especially if we want users to try out our software in real terms on their computers. So what exciting update for us uh, is that we have our first full deployment guide. So using all of our containerized applications, we have a deployment guide that goes into a quite great depth of detail, explaining every environment variable and the specific steps required in order to setting them up. But this is in a, a localized environment. Uh, split between three different stages, setting up our authorization service, setting up our data management services, and then setting up our search and discovery components. This is still quite arduous, but it gives all the information a user would need in terms of getting the services up and running so they can start to look at their own specific environments and see how it can be configured otherwise. Um, it's certainly a first step, uh, but it's definitely a foundation that uh, we want to kind of start from. Now, 
This again is quite cumbersome and would take time to install each container. So how do we get this in the hands of users in the frictionless manner that we want so they can get it up and running uh, as fast as possible? And this is where I'm talking about more of our uh, frictionless adoption. Uh, I'm really excited to say that we have a quick start. Uh, and the uh, slogan that I'm running with is it's three steps, two commands, and you have one platform up and running. So all you need is Docker desktop, allocate appropriate resources to it, and then you do a git clone. I cheated a little bit, go into the, uh, the file, uh, and then you just do a Docker compose up, and it will run you through that deployment step in a stepwise manner. Um, so it will pull all of the containers that are required, the Overture ones as well as third-party ones, and it will run through a stepwise uh, list of checks to make sure each one of them is spun up in the order that is required. And then by the end of it, we have a lovely uh, script that tells us where our front-end portal is located, pre-populated with data, uh, where our platform guides are located, and we have new platform guides that will run through things like submission and download. And also uh, where you can find some extra detail in terms of uh, documentation, not only within the Docker Compose, but as it relates to our deployment guide. So you can kind of see exactly how this was built and then how it could potentially be configured for your purposes. Uh, I just touched on this. Uh, platform guides are on our website. If you go to overture.bio, uh, you'll see view demo portal. That's how you can see it in real time. But if you see get started, all of these instructions are there and all of our platform guides are available um, for use. Please, if you go through it and you see any issues or errors, my name is Mitchell. My email will be at the end of the slide. Find me and let me know. Um, I would love to, to make this as, as good as we can make it. OK. And the last thing that I want to touch on is kind of just uh, the sort of framework and model that we've been going for. Um, we're open source, uh, but to be open source isn't enough just to show your code especially if you want to make your software usable and reusable to a broader audience. Uh, so we worked really hard at this model of see it, try it, and own it. So a way to look at it, we have our Overture demo portal available from our website as a read-only resource. It's got a learn more uh, section as well, too, that covers basic usage. So you don't have to dive into documentation. You can get a really quick overview. Uh, we have a way to try it, which is the Over Overture Quick Start, as I just discussed along with the guides, so you can use it on your computer in real time to get a feel for the system and see if it works for you. Uh, and the final area in terms of um, improvement, I think, in terms of how we, uh, uh, if we go move forward is really solidifying a way to own it. So bridging that gap between someone that's completely new and that's interested in the software and getting in their hands to the point where it's a production uh, environment where it's doing real data management. Uh, consultation is great but we can only scale consultation so far. Um, any external collaborations that we're having now, um, I'm very adamant on documentation and coming out with the deployment guide for specific architectures. Um, that way we can kind of help bridge this gap because I, I feel if it's useful for one, it must be useful for many. And in our open science type of way, we wanna make sure that we're sharing all the information that we can. Um, so documentation is key. I mean, we hear it all the time, but uh, especially in this case, um, documentation on deployment and deployment architectures uh, definitely is an area of improvement that we're gonna move forward with. Uh, yeah, fancy animation. We have uh, a GitHub. Uh, so github.com slash overture dash stack. Um, there's a nice little uh, front, I uh, forget what you call it, but there's some information on the front homepage that will link also to our, to our development goals. Um, I have some of them listed here. Uh, if you're interested in any one of these, uh, feel free to talk to me, but you're actually probably best talking to Justin. We have one of our brilliant developers here. Um, we're working on tabular data submissions, particularly uh, relevant to PCGL, uh, generalized molecular file data management, uh, particularly relevant to what, virus, what Justin will soon speak about, uh, search federation, which Melanie touched on on ICGCR go as well as adding in visualiz visualization and analysis tool integration. And yeah, if anybody um, finds the cartoon character looking familiar, I, I did make it in the uh, in light of Justin, who you'll see next. <laughs> okay, I would like to thank the people really doing the hard work. Everybody on the screen here, it's wonderful to work at OICR. It's an absolute privilege. 
uh, and I'm happy to do the work that I'm doing and I'm proud of the work that we've been we've done. Um, I'd like to thank the funding agencies definitely that help uh, maintain the project and enable us to do the work that we're doing. Uh, and I encourage everybody to check out the resources discussed, check out overture.bio, uh, and you can email me, find me at the conference, um, or me, Melanie, Alexis, Justin, we're all around here, very friendly people, as you are too. Uh, thank you for listening to me, and uh, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Yep, go ahead. Thanks. Sorry. So um, thinking about the talk we just heard before yours and putting it in the context of what we just heard from you, let's assume that a lot of what you just talked about goes swimmingly and you get a bunch of people to adopt Overture and it's working great. People are submitting data. How do you folks envision the next step of that, which is letting all of those adopters tie together and link up to maybe larger repository setups that can do things like mint persistent identifiers for all this really cool data and and build a landscape out of all of the individual adoptions uh, that's a tough question uh because that's kind of leaps forward where we are now sure. <laughs> speculate away <laughs> yeah um it, that's because that's beyond even just federated search that's a quite an ambitious aim in terms of like greater community adoption, it's something that you really need to prepare for. You can definitely suffer from success if you expand too early. Uh, right now, main focus is working with the external collaborators that we have and documenting that process and then trying to scale that outwards. There are people that are doing a good job that uh, I, the next flow presentation yesterday was very informative and I actually love what they're doing and kind of the model and framework they've adopted. Uh, Galaxy has kind of gone in a similar way with a very massive community. Um, but making sure that we have those like efficient uh, lines of communication because it can get messy very quickly will be important. But those who run fast tend to stumble, so one step at a time. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, great tool. Um, I was wondering for people that might already have an existing uh, web application, you know, that has a database, has an API, but they want to take advantage of you know the visualization capabilities, especially. Is there any way to like integrate part of Overture into their existing application? That's a great question. It depends, because um, it's going to be like a case by case basis, right? Uh, a ranger which sets up our front end search API uh, and search UI components is data agnostic and very modular. It really just requires an Elasticsearch index and Elasticsearch documents. So if you can get to the point of that. Um, I do see challenges with actually like grabbing the file data and then visualizing it, that there would be quite a bit of development effort. Um, I do like your question though, and I'd be happy to chat further about your specific use case and see if there's anything that we can do. Yeah, maybe I'll find you. Yeah, yeah, I'll be around.